In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Mary, my mother, you were the first to live the way of the cross. You felt every pain and every humiliation. You were unafraid of the ridicule heaped upon you by the crowds. Your eyes were ever on Jesus and his name. Is that the secret of your miraculous strength? How did your loving heart bear such a burden and such a weight? As you watched him stumble and fall, were you tortured by the memory of all the yesterdays, his birth, his hidden life, and his ministry? Obtain for me the grace to understand the mystery, the wisdom and the divine love, as I go seen to see. Grant that my heart, like yours, may be pierced through by the side of his sorrow and his misery, and that I may determine never to offend him again. What a price he paid to cover my sins, to open the gates of heaven for me, and to fill my soul with his own spirit. Sweet Mother, let us travel this way together, and grant us that the love in my poor heart may give you some slight consolation. Amen. You felt beneath its weight to show me you understand my fault. 
Is it pride that makes me want to shine even in pain? You were not ashamed to fall, to admit the cross was heavy. There are those in the world whom my pride will not tolerate, as I expect everyone to be strong, yet I am weak. I am ashamed to admit failure in anything. If the Father permits failure in my life, just as he permitted you to fall, then I must know there is good in that failure which my mind will never comprehend. I must not concentrate on the eyes of others as they rest upon my faults. Rather, I must reach up to touch that invisible hand and drink in that invisible strength ever at my side. Weak Jesus, help all men who try so hard to be good, but whose nature is constantly opposed to them walking straight and tall down the narrow road of life. Raise their heads to see the glory that is to come, rather than the misery of the present moment. Your love for me gave you strength to rise from your fall. Look upon all those whom the world considers unprofitable servants, and give them the courage to be more concerned as to how they stand before you, rather than their fellow men. Amen. The fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. My Jesus, it was a great sorrow to realize your pain and caused Mary so much grief. As Redeemer, you wanted her to share your pain for mankind. When you glanced at each other in an unrolled suffering, what gave you both the courage to carry on without the least alleviation, without anger at such injustice? It seemed as if you desired to suffer every possible pain to give me an example of how to suffer when my time comes. What a humiliation for you when your mother saw you in such a pitiable state, weak, helpless, at the mercy of sinful men, holiness exposed to evil and all hideousness. Did every moment of that short encounter seem like an eternity? As I see so much suffering in the world, there are times I think it is all hopeless. There is an element of lethargy in my prayers for mankind that says, I'll pray for what the Lord will do. The sick grow sicker, and the hungry starve. I think of that glance between you and Mary, the glance that said, Let us give this misery to the Father for the salvation of souls. The Father's power takes our pain and our frustration and renews souls, saves them for a new life, life of eternal joy, eternal happiness. It is worth it all. Give perseverance to the sick so that they can carry the cross of frustration and agony with love and resignation for the salvation of others. Amen. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. Whose bodies and souls were healed by you. 
Where were they when you needed someone to give you the least sign of comfort? Ingratitude must have borne down upon your hearts and made the cross nearly impossible to carry. There are times I too, for all my efforts, your kingdom might be tied and end in nothingness. Did your eyes roam the crowd for the comfort of just one individual, one sign of pity, one sign of grief? My heart thrills with a sad joy when I think of one woman breaking away from fear and human respect and offering you her thin veils of your pure bleeding face. Your loving hearts, ever watching for the least sign of love, imprinted the image of your torn face upon it. How can you forget yourself so completely and reward such a small act of kindness? I must admit I have been amongst those who are afraid to know you, rather than like Veronica. She did not care if the world knew she loved you. Heartbroken Jesus, give me that quality of the soul so necessary to witness to spread the word, to tell all people of your love for them. Send many into your vineyard so that the people of all nations may receive the good news. And print your divine image upon my soul, and let the thin veil of human nature bear a perfect resemblance to your loving spirit. Amen. The seventh station. Jesus falls the second time. My Jesus, one of the beautiful qualities that people admire in you is your strength in time of ridicule. Your ability to rise above the occasion. But now you fall the second time. Apparently conquered by the pain of the cross. People who judged you by appearances made a terrible mistake. What looked like weakness was unparalleled strength. I often judge by appearances and how wrong I am most of the time. The world judges entirely by this fraudulent method of discerning. It looks down upon those who apparently have given their best and are now in need. It judges the poor as failures, the sick as useless, and the aged as burdened. How wrong that kind of judgment is in light of your second fall. Your greatest moment was your weakest one. Your greatest triumph was a failure. Your greatest act of love was a desolation. Your greatest show of power was in that utter lack of strength threw you to the ground. Weak and powerful Jesus, give me the grace to see beyond what is visible and be more aware of your wisdom and its weakness. Give the aged, sick, handicapped, deaf, and blind the fruit of joy so they may ever be aware of the Father's gifts and the vast difference between what the world sees and what the Father sees, so that they may glory in their weakness, so the power of God may be manifest. Amen. The eighth stage, Jesus speaks to the Holy Lord. My Jesus, I am amazed to give compassion to others in the time of need. When I suffer, I have a tendency to think only of myself, you forgot yourself completely. When you saw the holy women when you came over the torments, you consoled them and taught them to a deep lady of passion. You wanted them to understand that the real people to cut out of was the rejection of suffering from the chosen people, a people set above from every other nation who refused to accept God's Son. The act of redemption would go on, and no one would ever be able to take away your dignity as Son of God. But the evil, greed, jealousy, and ambition in the hearts of those who should have recognized you was the issue of evil. To be so close to God and man and miss him completely was the real crime. My Jesus, I feel like it's a sin when I strain and ask and swallow count. When I take out the sponge in my daughter's eye to get the game of my own. It is such a gift, this gift of faith. It is such a sublime grace to possess your own spirit. Why have my hands and how I miss life? I miss the many disguises you take upon yourself and see only people, circumstances, and human events, not the loving hand of the Father guiding all things. Sit, lonely and old, to have a nice presence in the midst. Amen. The night station of Jesus falls to the My Jesus, even with the help of Simon, we fell at the time. Will you tell me that there may be times in my life that I will fall again and again despite the help of friends and loved ones? That at times when the crosses you can make my life are more than I can bear? It is as if all the seconds of a lifetime are suddenly compressed into the present moment, and it is more than I understand. That what lives my hope to see you so weak and helpless is comfort to my soul to know that you understand my sufferings from the Holy Spirit. 
We love the main, main you want to experience every kind of pain, just like an absent toy to, for example, a coach. When I cry out from the depths of my soul, this suffering is more than I can bear. Do you whisper, yes, I understand? When I'm discouraged after many falls, you say in my inmost being, keep going, I know how hard it is to rise. There are many people who have slowly tried in body and soul with alcohol and drug weaknesses who try and try and fall again and again. Through the humiliation of this little fall, give them the courage and perseverance to take up the cross and follow you. Amen. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. It is hard to imagine a God being held to a cross by his own creatures. It is even more difficult for my mind to understand the love that permitted such a thing to happen. As those men throw heavy nails through the hands and feet, dear Jesus, they draw for the pain and tribulation through some particular human weakness and sin. Was the nail in your right hand for those who spend their lives in dissipation and boredom? Was the nail in your left hand in revelation for all consecrated souls who live lukewarm lives? Were you stretching out your arms to show us how much you love us? As the feet that walk on hot, dusty roads were nailed fast to be cut by in a deadly grip of pain to make revelation for all those who so nearly learned the broad road of sin and self indulgence. It seems to Jesus who walked his head to the ground hand and foot as a hope to be to the tomb of love. You see me shout from the top of the hill, I love you, come to me, see, I am held fast. I cannot hurt you, only you can hurt me. How will the Holy Spirit look that can see such love and turn away? Is it not true I too have turned away when I did not accept the Father's will of love? Teach me to keep my arms ever open to love, to forgive and to render service, willing to be who rather than her, satisfied to love and not be loved in return. Amen. The twelfth station, Jesus dies at the cross. God is dead. No wonder the earth which the sun in itself, the dead lives, and men is divine and love. Your human body gave up its soul and death, but your divinity, dear Jesus, continued to manifest its power. All creation rebelled as the word made flesh and related to his world. Man alone was too proud to see and too stubborn to acknowledge the truth. Redemption was accomplished. Man would never have an excuse to forget how much he loved him. The thief on the right saw something he could not explain. He saw him down on a tree and knew he was God. His need made him see his own guilt and in innocence. The promise of eternal life made the remaining hours of his torture endurable. A common thief was one to a love with deep faith, hope, and love. He saw more than his eyes and vision. He felt the presence he could not explain and would not argue with. He was in need and accepted the way God designed to help him. Forgive our pride, dear Jesus, as we spent hours speculating, days arguing, and often a lifetime in rejecting the death which is a supplying mystery. 
Have pity on those who told their sins in the flood, because they never feel the need to reach out to the man of for consolation. Amen. The liberty and station of Jesus is taken back to the cross. My Jesus, it was with deep grief that Mary finally took you in her arms and saw all the blood sin and inflicted upon you. Mary Magdalene looked upon your dead body with horror. Nicodemus, the man so full of human respect, who came to you by night, suddenly received the village to help Joseph take you down from the cross. Go once more to heaven by only a few followers. When loneliness and failure cross my path, let me think of this lonely moment and this total failure. Failure in the eyes of men. How wrong they were, how mistaken the concept of success. The greatest act of love was given in desolation, and the most successful mission accomplished and finished, and all seemed lost. Is this not true in my life, dear Jesus? I judge my failures harshly. I demand perfection instead of loneliness. My idea of success is for all to end well according to my life. Give it to all men the grace to see that doing the will is more important than success. If failure is permitted for my greater good, Teach me how to use it to my advantage. Let me say, as he once said, that to do the will of the Father is my food. Let not the standards of this world take possession of me, but surely day you have set for me. To be holy and to accomplish the Father's will with great love. Let me accept grace and blame, success and failure with equal serenity and anger. To Florentine Station, Jesus is laid in the sepulchre. My Jesus, you were laid to rest in a stranger's tomb. You were born with nothing of this world's good, and you died to touch on everything. When you came into the world, man slept and angels sang, and now it's a new bit of gracious sound and only a few weeks. Both events were closed in obscurity. The majority of men live in such a way. Most of us live and die, knowing and known by only a few. What are you trying to tell us, dear Jesus? Have that important in our lives are, because we are accomplishing the Father's will. Will we ever learn the lesson of humility that makes us content with who we are, where we are, and what we are? Will our faith ever be strong enough to see power and weakness and go through the sufferings of our lives? Will our hope be trusted enough to rely on our confidence, even when we have nowhere to lay ahead? Will our love ever be strong enough for not to take scandal on the cross? My Jesus, hide my soul in your heart as you lie in the sepulchre of God. Let my heart be as a fire to keep you warm. Let my desire to know and love you be like a torch to light the darkness. Let my soul sing softly a hymn of repentant love as the hours pass and the resurrection is at hand. Let me rejoice with Jesus with all the angels in the hymn of praise and thanksgiving, who so great a love, so great a God, so great a day. Amen. My Jesus, I have traveled your way of the cross. It seems so real and I feel so ashamed. I repent of my sufferings and find a way to the Father's will difficult. My mind brought down by the poverty, sickness, starvation, grief, and hatred in the world. There are many innocent people who suffer so unjustly. There are those born with physical and mental defects. Do we understand that you continue to carry the cross in the minds and bodies of each human being? Help me to see the Father's will and every incident of my daily life. This is what you did. You saw the Father's will and persecutors to enemies in pain. You saw the beauty of the cross and embraced it as a desired treasure. My world and mind is dulled by injustice and suffering, and I lose sight of the glory that is to come. Help me to trust the Father and to realize that there is something great behind my insignificant suffering. There is someone lifting my cross to fill my shoulders, there is divine wisdom and all the petty annoyances that open my soul every day. Teach me the lessons contained on my cross, the wisdom of this necessity, the beauty of its variety, and the fortitude that accompanies even the smallest cross. Mary and my mother obtain for me the grace to be Jesus to my name and to my neighbor, to see my neighbor in Jesus.